Good evening. Please stand and join in singing our entrance hymn. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me, me to the Lord, Lord our, our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, for they had everything in common. With great power, the apostle bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There were no needy person among them, for those who own property or houses will sell them. Bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to the need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, glory, glory to, to you, o Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand into and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. 
us cry. Good evening. Ah, uh, did, you, did you guys get the news? Did you hear the news? Christ is risen. Indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the good news. That's the good news. Right? Do not be unbelieving, but believe. Believe. You have to believe it to achieve it. That's not just like a rhyme. That's like real. You got to believe it to receive it. You got to have it. Right? You got to have that faith. You don't need giant faith. You need a mustard seed and you're going to be fine. You can move mountains. You're going to fill up valleys and you're going to experience new life. This is Divine Mercy Sunday. Divine Mercy Sunday. This is a great, great day. Interesting, the church gives us this reading. And if you heard those words at the beginning of this reading, it said, on the evening of that first day of the week. That's the way they counted days back then. The first day of the week was what we call Sunday. All right? So that means a week passed since the resurrection. That's why we have this reading today. It's a week since, it's the eighth day, the resurrection. And this happens to be what the church calls Divine Mercy Sunday. You see, in the church, we can't just party for one day. It's not enough. You got to party for eight days. Everybody thinks it's boring to follow Jesus. It is not boring. I don't know about you, but I was partying this week, okay? I'm, I mean, like, I, I'm still feeling, I'm feeling the, like, I'm ready to go. I got, we're going we're gonna to have a, a mass and the night's going to keep going. No, I'm serious, though. I'm, I'm kind of joking, but I'm serious. Because the church wants you to celebrate as if you are witnessing the resurrected Christ. Like, as if he's in front of you right now. And like, whoa. Like, he's really alive. What does that mean? How do you relate to that? How can you relate to that? It's supposedly 2,000 years ago. But here's the trick. Liturgy, what we do right now, is outside of time. It's in time and at the same time outside of time. So we were supposed to be living these eight days as if we were like these apostles, like seeing him for the first time. And here's what happens during the octave. The octave refers to the eight days from Sunday of Easter to Divine Mercy Sunday, right now. And that means every day is celebrated as if it was Easter all over again, as if like he came out of the tomb today. Well, I mean, come on, think about it. When is a moment in your life when you have been thrilled, when you have been surprised by joy, when you were just blown away by news. You know, she's pregnant, right? You've been trying for so hard to have a baby. Ah, praise the Lord. We got a baby on the way, right? Right? Would you marry me? Oh my goodness, I, I've been waiting for that for so long. I'm so happy, right? I found the one that I thought was lost. Praise the Lord, right? Those moments of tremendous joy. That's what the Lord wants us to have today. Now, you might be thinking, well, like, you know, it's been a while since I felt like that. Like, I've only known like a year of like misery, and sadness, and coronavirus, and sickness, and being like socially isolated, and like staying six feet away from everybody, and I haven't hugged anybody in like a year and a half, right, okay? So it's like, I don't remember what it's like to be surprised by joy. I kind of forgot what that's like, you know? I've had a rough few years of my life, or a decade of my life, or 20, 30 years. I don't know your story. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you where you're at. Guess what? Jesus says in the gospel today to the apostles, he goes, did you catch that? Did you hear him when he said, you didn't hear that part, because it says, and when he said this, he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Stop. Stop. Did you hear that? Did you just hear what he said? He's giving men the power to forgive sins. He does it, but through them. That should blow your mind. That's crazy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? We even, he had to say that, right? Remember when the paralytic, right? lower down through the roof and they were all waiting the Pharisees were ready to catch him again and he says your sins are forgiven and they're thinking in their hearts who can forgive sins God alone he's blaspheming and he says so that you will believe that the son of man has the power to forgive sins I say to you get up he's paralyzed who can get up who can cure a paralyzed man not even a doctor get up and go home take your mat and get out of here and it says the paralyzed man got up 
He took his mat and he went home. I think Jesus Christ can forgive sins. Amen? God can forgive sins. And he passed that power amazingly, mind-blowingly, he passed that power on the priest. I don't know why more people don't go to confession. I don't know why people don't wait, right, for confession. I mean, if like this grace to have a heart refreshed, made clean, made new, whenever you want, you just got to bring it to him. And you got to be in a position of life to do so. Okay, yeah. But given that, you can receive forgiveness. It's like the baby's baptized brand new again. Every soul, brand new. This is powerful. So the church dedicates an entire Sunday to talking about the mercy of Jesus Christ. The power. So yes, let's, turn, let's, let's go back to where we were. I've had a decade that's been miserable, right? Well, what makes us more miserable than sin? All right? Yes, sickness and death can be miserable. Right? Sickness and death can be miserable. But you know, even worse than sickness and death, and I'm going to preach this, is sin. I'm going to tell you right now, even worse than sickness and death is sin. Why? Because the tomb is empty. We believe that if you live in him and you die in him, you're going to live on forever. So we grieve when we lose our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and children. And that's real and that pain is real. But we do that with a faith that there is an eternal life, a reality that they keep on living. They're not in the cemetery. They're not in the dust. They are in heaven or in purgatory on the way to heaven, if they're with the Lord, right? So they go on, and once they get to heaven, they're better than we'll ever be. They will be better than we will ever be. So yes, we weep for ourselves and for our love for them. Thank you, that's right, that's right. But do not weep for them, for they now know, once they go through that purification, they know what every eye has desired to see, what every ear has desired to hear what every heart has conceived the fullness of love now that's hard to imagine and that's why that's why Jesus says in here in the gospel today blessed are you you who have believed more blessed are those who have not seen and have believed that's why he appeared to them because it's too much for us we can't comprehend it we cannot comprehend it and so he had thank you thank you for Thomas I'm grateful for Thomas. If it weren't for Thomas, we wouldn't have a further proof of the resurrection, right? It's called the criteria of embarrassment. Why would the church preserve an embarrassing story about one of the guys that didn't even believe was supposed to be among the 12? Why? To help us believe right now that it's really real. Even one of them could doubt. You struggle with doubt? You struggle with disbelief? Well, so did he, and he lived with them, and he heard about him, and they were trying to convince him, yo, he came in and ate with us. He's alive. Yeah, right. If I don't put my finger in his hands or side, I'm not going to believe so Jesus, come on, Thomas, let's do this. And then he says, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God. Do you know those are the words that we should say at the consecration? When the priest has Jesus in his hands at that moment, we should say, my Lord and my God. We're like Thomas, right? And we can't even see the physical Jesus in his human person. We just see him hidden behind the bread. It's the same Jesus. That's the mystery of faith. That's what we say, mystery of faith. But it's Jesus. And if there's one thing Jesus wants, it's you. <laughs> he wants you. He wants all of you, all of you, and your heart. He wants your soul. Give him everything. And he will not stop to bug you. And he will not stop to bother you or to awaken you to his need for you and your heart. Because that's what real love does. Real love doesn't give up on the beloved when the beloved is sleeping or distracted or is looking elsewhere or has lost her way. Real love chases down the lover. And real love will stop at nothing, will stop at nothing to achieve that love, to receive that love, to rescue that love, to express how much I love you. Why can't you just accept it? Right? That's what God probably wants to think with us. Why can't you just open your hearts? I've been, I'm dying to love you. I'm literally dying to love you. But you just get distracted in your own life and your work and your busyness and you stop. you got to stop that. you got to come closer, he's saying, and believe. It's me. I, I want to have a relationship with you. I want in. I want that heart. I want to be in there. Don't, don't block that. That's love. Love wants that. Love fights. Love fights for the beloved. And Jesus fought. He fought like a man 
to the death for us. And out of his side flowed blood and water, right? That's what the scripture says in John's gospel when they pierced him with a lance. And from that blood and water, what, what flows out when the water breaks, right? When new life is about to burst forth at birth, blood and water. <laughs> That's a symbol. This is, this, is, this is new life. Out of the side of Christ was born the church, the bride of Christ. The, the reason we can have hope, why we can be baptized in water, why we can have the Eucharist and receive his body and blood and be fed on the flesh of Christ is because he offered it for us. That's a new life. He, his death brought life. That's it. And every confession regenerates what is dead in us because the wages of sin is death. So mercy and God pours out of his side, pours out of the cross, pours from his heart. Mercy is pouring down on the earth. Think about it. 135 nations, 1.6 billion Catholics, those receiving mercy. Heaven is wide open, pouring mercy out every day. All we got to do is just receive it. It's free gift. You just got to believe it and receive it. And when you get that, you start to taste God's love, his forgiveness, that he doesn't judge you, your shame, your guilt, your, all that darkness is just washed in his mercy, that you're made new. Guess what? There's hope in the midst of the darkness. I'm, I'm accepted, I'm loved, even despite my past. Yes, yes. Look who Jesus called. They were a mess. Every single one of them were a mess. Maybe John the Beloved, one exception, right? Okay. So what's the deal? The deal is don't be afraid of the mercy of God, but go after it. Receive it. All right. I could preach this. You'd be like, all right, but I want to just give a concrete story before we continue Mass. Because I don't know about you, but I need testimony. And that's what Jesus says. He sends them out as witnesses. He wants them to give testimony. So testimony helps my own faith. So I want to share you some good news, share with you some good news. Because it's good to have good news. We have enough bad news. I don't want any more bad news. I don't like watching the news anymore. I want good news, right? That's why I come to church, right? You don't need to watch CNN or Fox or whatever you watch. Watch Jesus. Watch the chosen, okay? Right? I'm tired of bad news. I don't know about you. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I want to tell you some good news. Here's some good news. So some months back, I got a phone call. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a name, right, just so for, you know, for privacy. So let's just call her Bella, for, just for privacy. She's, that's not her real name, but it's a real person, real story. And she lives upstate, and somebody gave her my name. Somehow she found some priest who told her to call me. She's Jewish. She's Jewish. And um, she was suffering terribly, terrible affliction, terrible affliction, and really rough, rough stuff. Okay, young, 27, 28 years old. And uh, she said she was calling because she needed prayers for healing, for liberation. She was being afflicted badly. And I said, all right, Bella, that's fine. We can pray. I'll pray with everybody. I'll pray with anybody. I don't care who you are. I'll pray with you. But um, I'm going to say, Bella, I, I, when I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus. Is that okay? She's like, whatever it takes, okay? She's Jewish. Whatever it takes. I'm like, all right. Really wasn't practicing Jewish, just, you know, just by heritage. So I said, okay. All right. How about, and I started to explain her a little bit about the Trinity and that, you know, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus, we worship the same God. It's just that he revealed himself more fully in Jesus. That he's got a Trinity, right? He's not just, just one. He's one, per, one God with three persons, right? Anyway, I do a little bit. I said, would you pray with me? Yeah, I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. Okay. So we said a prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. She repeats after me, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of his precious blood, by the power of his precious blood, I renounce and reject Satan and all the demons and all the evil spirits. I renounce and reject. And she's praying. I'm like, this girl, she's for real. She's praying not just like, uh, she's like in it. And I'm, I'm like, all right, we got something. We can, I, can, I said, Bella, I can work with you. I can work with you. So she prays intensely. She asks me what, I give her some prayers. She starts praying like, like a machine. And I give her a couple books. She's like, two days later, she reads the book, read the book, read the book. I'm like, she's serious. She wants to be free of this affliction. You know, you might ask yourself, what is afflicting you tonight? So one day she calls up and she's like, Father. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I want to become Catholic. I'm like, praise you, Jesus, right? Praise the Lord. She, <laughs> she wants in. She's like feeling it and she wants more. All right. So I'm like, okay. Well, guess what? This year, because of COVID, one of the blessings of COVID is that our RCIA program 
was actually remote. Zoom. We were just like the kids in school. They were Zooming it in every Wednesday, right? So she joins in, and she's super, super faithful, right? So she's got all kinds of issues and her family and everything. It's just, I won't go into the details, but, you know, struggles, all right? We all have struggles. Hers were real. So one of the things she was struggling is because, you know, how many people have struggled with work this year? It's hard to find a job. And they were really concerned about leaving the house because of COVID. And mom has all kinds of health conditions. They were trying to protect her and had to stay home. So how can you get a job when you got to stay inside? Not very easy. And, and they, so it was, it was rough, rough, rough go. Well, guess what? So along the way, it's coming time for the sacraments, which we did last Saturday for those that didn't have them here. But she couldn't make it down here because it's too much for them upstate and COVID, et cetera, et cetera. So she's like, can you help me find a place up here? So she researched. She found a parish up there that does really good in terms of like keeping it clean and protecting and everything like that. And I talked to the priest. He said he'd be glad to have her. So she agrees to do it up there. He agrees to receive her. And she is thrilled. She's going to become Catholic. And, but she's going through it. She's going through the struggle. It's bad what she's going through. And all of a sudden, one of our employees here is kind of working with her, calling her, helping her out. Um, she's like, did you hear? I'm like, what? She's like, she's like, Bella got a job. I was like, she got a job, yeah. There was a guy who was asking to pray with her. And his son has a company and needed somebody to work from home on like a tech support, whatever it is, you know. So she got hired. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. Like she's been waiting for this for months right here, five days before she's going to get her sacraments. It's like God is moving mountains in this life where she's struggling. And then she oh, did you tell you what else? What? Her mom wants to become Catholic. <laughs> Are you serious? She's also Jewish. Come on. No, for real. This girl is on fire. She's so happy this week. She's been, every day she's getting excited. And just this afternoon, she sent me a picture. And there she is in the sanctuary. Huge smile. Brand new, fresh, baptized, confirmed First Communion. And she is through the roof. I share this because it's real. God is real. Don't believe that your misery is too much for God. That that death that has you hurting and depressed in your life, because we all have it, right? Don't believe that that is going to dominate who you are or your identity. That, that sickness, that that concern is too much for the God of love. Because he's bigger than your sickness, than your sin, than your sadness, than your depression, than the death, than the sickness. God is bigger than that. And he's aching to pour it out. All we got to do is come close. Sometimes we are the ones. We stay, we keep him at an arm's length. We like socially distance from God. Like I got God when I need him, I'll bring him in. But then I got my stuff I got to do. So I'm gonna, and we keep him at that social, God doesn't want that. God's looking for intimacy, right? It is very impersonal to keep God at a distance. God wants to be personal with us and enter inside of us and be received by us. And, and he's aching to tell us that story from the cross and on the other side of the resurrection. You have come to believe, my Lord and my God. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Receive the graces. Stay close to Jesus. This is beautiful next 38 days of Easter still left. Come and drink deeply of the living water and receive the peace and the love of Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have not seen but still believe. With confident faith, we bring our concerns before God. That the newly baptized and newly received find in the church both welcome and challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations, rich and poor, work together to share the world's resources fairly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those seeking an increase in faith will grow in certainty that God's divine mercy is abundant beyond human imagination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. That all who need God's mercy find it in the actions of Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the members of this community strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our personal intentions and for all whom have asked for our prayers, we pray for the repose of the souls of Juana Espinal, Roberto Tejada, Jose A. Camacho, Renzo Sosa, Edison Blanco, Angel Rodriguez, Rosa Cartagena, Luis Maria Mama Quesada, and Cynthia Caguana, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For Harry Nessler, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the power of God's grace and mercy offered to us through the sacraments, especially the rich sacrament of confession. We ask God that our hearts will be disposed to receive him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayers. We pause now to remember our private intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. Generous God, plant your precious gift of faith ever deeper in our hearts. All that we ask, we ask through the intercession of the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary, and through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Alleluia, number one.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, by the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by the confession of your name by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating that most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, 
we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray graciously, accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you and also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sin. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of the most of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Harry Nestler, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Have mercy. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. <laughs> Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. singing our communion hymn, I have not seen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts through Christ our Lord. 
Good evening, everyone. Just to say we got lots of special blessings um, this weekend. God, I think, gives out extra graces for the Feast of Divine Mercy. Um, tomorrow's Divine Mercy Holy Hour, 3 to 4. But to gear up for it, we're going to have uh, some guest priests who will be here to, to help those, because there's special promises given to those who confess on Mercy Sunday or before or after within eight days. So we want to make sure, especially on Mercy Sunday, to have priests available for that blessing. Also, you remember last year when it was Mercy Sunday, we were in lockdown. Father Vincent and I went to the roof and we blessed the four corners of the parish with the Divine Mercy image. We thought we'd, uh, we, could, we could start off that way tomorrow at 2.45. We'll bless the, we'll take the image that's in the chapel on the third floor in the rectory. We'll go to the roof, we'll give a blessing. Anyone's welcome to come out here and then if you're going to, and then we'll uh, come, come out and, with the image and arrive here at the church for the 3 o'clock Divine Mercy Holy Hour. Um, the veneration of image, opportunity for confession, the recitation of the Divine Mercy Chaplet, a very joyful occasion. I, I wish we were in a situation where we could celebrate with a piece of cake afterwards, but those days were coming. I wanted to also mention there was two uh, young people who were not able to, for, for personal reasons, to receive the sacraments at the Easter Vigil. So next Sunday at the 12.30 Mass, they're going to be receiving those sacraments. If that, I just don't want anyone to be surprised that there's a baptism of an adult uh, and uh, another adult with her making a, his confirmation that, that you won't be surprised by that at the, uh, at the 12.30 Mass tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, but, uh, but a week from tomorrow at uh, the 18th of April. Um, here at Holy Cross Church. Uh, there was one family was here for a wedding blessing, but they didn't make it today. Maybe we'll hope to catch up with them later. So everyone could just please stand for the final blessing, everybody. At the end of the dismissal will be the double Alleluia again. And this indicates that we're closing out the Easter octave to head into the Easter season. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia.